Hello, I was able to get my hands on a germanium diode made by the Soviet Union. So I'm going to upgrade the trench radio we made previously using this diode. Let's take a look at the Soviet created diode. The words above spell made in the Soviet Union. The four letters in the center of the package spell out diode. On the side there are other Slavic letters and here it states the manufacturing date. The date says November 5, 1969. Somebody wrote in cursive on the side as well, but it was illegible. Let's try opening it up. There are 100 Soviet-made germanium diodes. Let's zoom into it a bit. This is the needle electrode, and this is the germanium. The needle electrode and the germanium are connected. Now, let's try altering the trench radio we made. I say upgrade, but it isn't that hard to be honest. The trench radio we made previously is based off of this circuit drawn here. We made the detector component using a cutter blade and pencil lead. When upgrading to the germanium diode, we're going to remove the blade and the lead and insert the germanium diode in here. It's just that simple. Let's remove the pencil lead. And substitute the germanium diode in for it. We're done with the preparation, so let's try listening to the radio using the germanium diode. It's very audible. We can hear some news in English, probably from the station in Yokosuka. Great, it's politics. The volume is a lot louder compared to the detector we made from the blade and the lead. Let's say that was a 5, the germanium diode is a 20. That's how audible the radio is. Let's try measuring the voltage using an oscilloscope. The yellow measures the voltage between the antenna and the ground, and the blue waveform is the waveform of the ceramic speaker. This is from the blade and the LED detector, but the blue is the speaker's voltage waveform. We can use the radio, but when we're looking at the blue waveform, there are barely any fluctuations. Now let's try measuring the waveforms of the germanium diode. As we can see, the voltage waveform is a lot more fluctuant, and with it, the volume has increased. It's almost as if we raise the volume from a 5 to a 20. That's what it sounds like. It may be very confusing and peculiar how we can listen without any power source, but there is a legitimate reason behind it. The radio waves are outputted by the radio towers, which the antenna captures. The antenna makes use of these radio waves to output sound. Once the antenna captures the radio waves, these voltages are outputted. The diode then rectifies the voltage and sorts out just the sound. It's actually very simple. The antenna captures the waves, which the diode rectifies, and the speaker outputs a sound. Another reason why the sound is clear is because we're using a germanium diode. We're going to measure the forward voltage of the germanium diode using this tester. We were able to record a forward voltage of 0.36 volts from the Soviet-made diode. Now let's measure a regular diode's forward voltage. It comes out to be 0.6 volts. Basically, what this number means is that if the germanium diode receives a voltage of 0.36 volts from the antenna, it functions. But a normal diode requires a voltage of over 0.6 volts. This is the reason why a germanium diode functions even with low voltage and is useful in a situation that does not use a legitimate power source. 
We use ceramic earphones for the speaker because regular earphones cannot be used here. Regular earphones have coils that are wound all around the diaphragm and a magnet close by. When current flows through the coiling, the magnet becomes an electromagnet, making the diaphragm vibrate, resulting in a sound. The impedance of these earphones is around 30 ohms, which is a pretty low impedance. It's impossible to use electric power received by the antenna to produce sounds from the speaker. And this is why regular earphones can't be used here. On the other hand, ceramic earphones function very similarly but have very high impedances. I did try to measure the impedance, but the range was in mega ohms and too high. Ceramic earphones have very high impedances, which allow small signals to vibrate the diaphragm. Ceramic earphones, when drawn as Equivalent circuits are capacitors. In the trench radio we made previously, we used the cutter blade and pencil lead as a detector. In today's video, we're using a diode instead, which works to rectify. A heated cutter blade and pencil lead have the same rectifying function. I oxidized the cutter blade by heating it up. You might notice by comparing the oxidized blades and the new cutter blades, the oxidized blade is darker in color. The oxidized blade is black, but the color is actually caused by heating it up and cooling it down. This is the reason for the rust. Oxidized metals can work as semiconductors, so the surface of this oxidized blade will work as a semiconductor. By connecting the needle electrode to the cutter blade and also connecting the pencil lead, we've created a handmade electrode. By the way, this is a Schottky junction. A Schottky junction's forward voltage is smaller than that of a PN junction diode. It's a very primitive diode composition, but as the forward voltage is low, we can still use ceramic earphones to listen. To find which position works best as a diode, I'm moving the lead around the surface because unlike a diode created in a clean room, the surface is very uneven. This is why it's necessary to scan for a position that works as a diode. By substituting the germanium diode into the radio, we were able to increase the volume of the radio. The radio is becoming practical, but there's one more adjustment I wanted to make. I want to be able to select the station. By moving the coil here, we are able to briefly choose a station, but it doesn't really function very well. The sounds from the two radios overlap. One of the radio sounds are clear, but the other one sounds like a BGM. To enable station selection, I'm going to add a tuning circuit. A tuning circuit is a circuit for station selection. We are going to be using some metallic foil to create our tuning circuit. More specifically, we'll be using these two foils to make a capacitor. We're using the metal for the capacitor's electrode, but it can be any metal that conducts electricity. Here's an illustration of the circuit we'll be creating. Here's the antenna and coils. The capacitor we'll be creating from the foil. The germanium diode and the ceramic earphones. This is a typical circuit for a radio that uses a germanium diode. The tuning circuit is this part of the illustration. By changing the inductance of the coil, or the capacitance of the capacitor, we can choose specific frequencies. So basically, the radio waves are caught by the antenna and the voltage flows here. By using this tuning circuit, we can choose radio stations of specific frequencies and sound them off from the speaker. To make this possible, we have to change either the capacitance or the inductance. 
I'll get into the details a bit later on in the video. To change the inductance, change where the coil and the single copper wire are touching each other. As for the capacitor, the distance between the two foils electrodes and the area determine the capacitance. As there is a distance right now, the capacitance is 0 picofarads. A pico is 1 star 10 over 12. To make sure the two electrodes don't touch, I've inserted an insulation sheet between the two. What happens when we close the gap between the two electrodes is the capacitance increases. When they are completely overlapped, the capacitance is 25 picofarads. Basically, the closer the two electrodes are, the larger the capacitance. If we move the capacitor to the side, the capacitance drops. This is because the area overlapped decreases. By using the properties of the coil's inductance and the capacitor's capacitance, we're going to create a tuning circuit. We're going to use this open area to seal the capacitor's electrode. And I'm going to attach another to the top. I used masking tape here so it's easier to adjust later on. Connect one electrode to the antenna and the other to the ground line. Let's try selecting the station by moving the coil. We were able to select stations using the coil. Most radios don't use this coil moving method, but they change the area overlapping of the capacitors to tune and select stations. Digital radios select frequencies with their IC and output selected sounds through the speaker. This is why station selection is possible. It's thanks to the tuning circuit which uses the inductor, the capacitor, and the LC parallel filter. The LC parallel filter's impedance looks like this graph. The FC represents resonance frequency and can be found using this equation. This resonance frequency has the highest impedance. A high impedance signifies that the current doesn't flow in this direction. Let's say that the FC frequency is 1442 kHz. So the resonance frequency is 1442 kHz. As the impedance is high against a frequency of 1442 kHz, the frequency doesn't go through the LC resonance frequency circuit and instead goes through the speaker circuit. Other frequency components pass through the inductor and the capacitor. The radio waves captured by the antennas have various frequency components. All these various frequency components are mixed together. Frequencies of 100 kHz and 1600 kHz, all of these frequencies are combined. By changing the value of L and C, we can choose specific resonance frequencies to pass through and stop. Other signals of 1000 and 1600 kHz all flow through this way and don't pass through the speaker, so only the specific frequency waves will sound. In the last demonstration, we changed L, and in changing this value, we changed the resonance frequency and selected the sounds that we wanted to output from the speaker. In today's video, we used a Soviet-manufactured germanium diode to upgrade our trench radio. By changing the detector, the sound was made a lot more audible and the volume increased. Very interesting! Thank you for watching all the way till the end and please leave a like rating.